Hey all, this is Isaiah Stanback. Big Nate Newton and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for their sponsorship of this week's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. In case you're not familiar with Niagara, they're the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products. Products that save real money, like Niagara's stealth technology toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara also works with affordable housing projects and commercial multi-unit properties to save water usage in dollars where it's needed the most. So, if you want to conserve water and save money, check out NiagaraCorp.com. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah Stanback back in the building for another episode of Let, Let Me, me tell. tell You Something. Yes, and I'm so here man. with no other than the Big Nate Dog himself. What's up, with you, Big Dog? You good? Oh, man, I'm good. Got a little head cold, man, yeah. trying to get through this thing, man. Them allergies kicking my butt uh, right now, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah that's what, what you doing you go- for, man? A little honey? Bro, I, you know, I drink my tea. Right. Okay, right. I drink a ton of water. Right. I just had to start cleaning up my diet, too, Nate. Right. Because you know, your boy got a little heavy. Right. I got a little heavy. I know we yeah, talked yeah, about Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your wife said you get a little fat around the Yeah, edges, you get a little chubby, yeah. you know what I'm saying? These little, little box, Chevy, box Chevy right here, you know? I, no, you know what? For the first time in my life, Nate, uh-huh. I know if you, you've had weight. You know, if you went up, you yeah. went down. Yes, sir. For the first time in my life, Nate, I had to check myself on weight. Wow. It was different for me, man. Yeah. How it did was, you feel, man? I didn't like it. I did. <laughs> I, you know, I joked around about right, it, but on right, the inside, right. I was like, dang, Zay. Is this what it's like getting older? Like, you just can't... How like, old are you now, my friend? I'm 38. You're still a youngster, I'm man. I'm a young, I'm a spring chicken. Yeah. I'm a spring chicken, but my weight feels differently. Get you a know, little... Get a little know, yeah, a little piggish. Nate, I got, a, I got on a scale <laughs> the other day, Nate. Now, remember, when I, yeah. when I got drafted, okay, Dallas mm. told me I had to play at 207 or lighter. No heavier than 207. I got drafted at about 230, okay? And then I had to cut down. I had to cut down. Right. Okay? Cut down to about 207. The heaviest I got up to was 245 playing tight end. And I had to struggle to like keep that weight on. Right, right. You know what I weighed in that the other day? What's that? 247. Wow. Me and Michael Parsons are the same size. So I said either I would, I, I, man, I would be in heaven if I was 240. <laughs> <laughs> if I was 247. Man, I said this. I said I give myself two options. I said either. You're going to lose the weight. Right, right. Okay, body fat, whatever, okay? Or you're going to put your hand in the ground. One of the two. I need to either put my hand in the ground and go out there with the boys against Tampa Bay. Right, right. Or I need to get this weight up off me because this right. ain't right. It can't That's be right. healthy. Can't be. Yeah. Wow. yeah Your heart ain't used to that. No, nah, you got any tips for me? <laughs> we losing weight, lose weight and ain't got any... Come on, man. Yeah, just close your mouth. <laughs> just, you know, you know, close I, your mouth. I started cleaning it up yeah. a couple days ago. But all right, man. Um, what do you think about last week, Nate? We got to talk about it. And for those that are listening, we're talking playoff football today. But before we can talk playoff football, we have to talk about what the heck the Washington Commanders did to the Dallas Cowboys. And if y'all are listening, Nate's going to tell you guys exactly what happened. He has the exact reason why Dallas got scraped up. Well, the reason this is my reason. Okay. I know you're going to come with a more logical reason. <laughs> This is meant my reason is all the things over the whole year finally showed up. The great and late Joe Alvazana said, it catches up with you when it catches up with you. And when it do, you're not going to be able to do a thing mm. about it. The turnovers caught up with us. The, uh, the, uh, late and slow starts mm-hmm. caught up with us. Not being dominant and stopping the run, it stayed with us. Not being able to get the run started, it stayed with us. All of these little small things that we get, won 12 games, we fought through it except for the last half of the uh, Colts game mm-hmm. and the Minnesota game. Those are the games where we didn't, you know, late in one game and the whole game. In, uh, in the other game, but all of the things that we've been moaning about, groaning about all season long, all came finally ahead. caught up with us, and it, and it hurt us, and it embarrassed us. You know, it embarrassed the head coach, the quarterback, uh, and everybody in the organization. 
What would you say the one thing, if you could take away one element of that game and feel like you still had a chance, what would you take away? The turnover. Oh. The turnovers is always going to give a lesser team More the, 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 the opportunities they need, uh, the momentum they need. We have to uh, stop with the turnovers. What do you think is contributing to that? Uh, when you when you think when you think you're better than what you are, sometimes you don't you don't stop, and you don't diagnose the problem, mm -hmm. and you don't try to solve the problem. You know, you uh, hey, I'll get it as I go. Uh, when you don't value the football, you can say whatever you want. For sure. You know, and I, I'm gonna believe in this right here. If I tell my kids something, I gotta follow through. And when I'm giving advice to friends, mm -hmm. relatives, anybody, I say, please don't say something mm. that you don't mean because each time you don't enforce what you're talking about, people begin not to believe you yeah. or respect your word. Yeah. So when you go out and say, we'll learn from that and it, it won't happen again and it continues to happen, after a while, it becomes your cliche mm. that no one's listening to. Mm. So with that, we can talk about it. Dak. Yeah. I think Dak is a very capable quarterback. Very capable. When I say capable, capable is almost a bad word like potential. Yes, yes. Pretty much they go hand <clears> in hand. <throat> mm -hmm. Everybody has potential. That's right. Everybody doesn't have the potential to be great. And I think I think Dak does have the potential to be great. Right. But what I'm seeing from Dak right now is either his inability to properly diagnose coverages or his total disregard of what he's seeing. Yes. Either way, it's catastrophic for this organization. This has happened the whole second half of the season. This wasn't one game, two games. This dude got some interceptions now. And it's to the point where even mainstream media is talking about it. And now they're starting to say, you got to expect it. You ever been in a position in your, your professional career where you had to expect a negative aspect of the game because it's happened so frequently? I uh, know. And uh, that is what I talked about uh, eight weeks ago. And you mentioned it. And, you know, we do a show together, me, him, and Barry mm -hmm. uh, Church. And we started about six weeks ago yep. saying, whether it's your fault or not, this has to stop. Correct. Because now defense is saying, hey, no a little bit of disguise. <laughs> But be, but stay home or stay close to your man, yep. because his accuracy and his ability not to read what he's seeing, mm -hmm. you know, and thinking he has the arm to force it, we gonna get one. Yeah. And when the defense start thinking like that, yeah. the techniques sharpen up, and everybody just waiting on that opportunity. And you don't want that as a quarterback. You don't want that for your organization. The lion waiting in the weeds, just, yeah. just waiting. Like it's gonna happen. We gonna get it. Long yeah. I just sit here long enough. Yeah, we gonna get one. That's right. Okay, yeah, they got to they gotta figure that out. Now, <clears throat> as they're trying to figure that out, okay, as Coach McCarthy said this week, it's time to burn the tape. Yeah. Burn the tape. You know, I was I was from the, the the mindset of you watch the film on the way home. Yes. From Washington. Yes. And once you touch down, don't go back and watch that film no more. That's right. Don't go back and look at that Washington film no more. Whoa. All your attention needs to be on your next opponent, and they had to sit there on the plane and watch as their next opponent was decided for them. Right, Detroit and Green Bay had a game, mm -hmm. and that decided who they were going to be playing. That's okay? right. Detroit beat Green Bay. All right, Detroit was automatically eliminated earlier in the day. Right. All right. Detroit beat Green Bay, and by beating Green Bay, sent Seattle to the playoffs. Right. <clears throat> sent Seattle to the playoffs, but now you know who you're playing. That's right. And who is that? That's 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 the goat. That's the goat. That's the greatest of them all. Tom do, do you Brady. agree that he's a goat? You play with you play with some great players. Let me, let so for, for, for Nate Newton to say that Tom Brady is the GOAT, that has some weight to it. I think he's about the second best quarterback I've seen. And okay. I, the other my other greatest quarterback I just seen on film. But his era in which he threw the ball makes him very unique. That's Johnny Unitas. Mm. Yeah, that that that's my other guy. Okay. Yeah, he you know, when when a league where you didn't throw the ball, yeah. you know, where everything would run, 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 yeah. But Tom Brady is the second. Okay. I mean, then you got the other guys, you know, the, 
to me, the Joe Montanas of the world. Of I'm not a stat guy. Yeah, I'm not either. I'm a victory yep. guy. I'm about winning Impact, games yep. and Super Bowls and NFC and AFC championships. I'm not I'm not a stat guy. Yeah. You know, even when my wife, bless her heart, Michelle is her name, <laughs> come to me, oh, they about to break a record. <laughs> that to me, that is so let me tell you. Like something. Jamal Williams the other <laughs> night with Detroit, right? He beat Barry Sanders record. Make no mistake, he's no Barry Sanders. Right? Oh my God, man. <laughs> Please, if you ever meet me in the street, it's two <laughs> things we can't talk about. Don't tell me about no record that is not. Now, if it's a Super Bowl record, hey, man, they did this in the Super Bowl, I'm going to listen. But when you, if you meet me in the street and you want to talk to me, do not come up to me and ask me, do I think the Cowboys was going to the Super Bowl? I'm walking away from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all heard it here. Now don't don't try them. Don't oh, yeah. try them. I've been around I'm, I'm there a long time. I'm gonna look at you and I'm gonna look at you and I'm gonna just go <laughs> like y'all. I, do they still say deuce, deuce and deuces? Deuces, like, deuces. And I'm gonna keep walking. Dude asked me that the other day. You think them cowboy ready for deuces? <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I do it believe is, it is not disrespectful. He already gave y'all heads yeah. up that he gonna do it to you. So don't try, Nate. Yeah. What I believe is that we have a team <laughs> that can get to the second round. Okay. I watch football games. Getting through Tampa. Yeah. If they get to the second round, then then I'm, I'm hyped. Not for no Super Bowl that, hey, that mean we improve. That mean that, that bitter taste of last year getting bullied by San Francisco took effect. Mm. But if we go to Tampa, which don't have a run game, and they run the ball for 140 yards, mm. Like the they first control game. the clock. Yeah. Like the first game. Yeah. And Tom and Tom pick pick us apart. I'm gonna I'm gonna be solely disappointed. Mm. You know, uh, you know, and I, I know you try to slip in the Seattle Seahawks, you know, tw- not once but twice. Mm. But I just ignored <laughs> it. But I'm gonna tell you this right here. If you want to know, it's called team building. Mm-hmm. And we the one thing, and I know I'm jumping the gun. No, you're there. fine. You're good. The one thing that bothers me that has not been fixed for I don't know how long, I mean on a consistent basis, is we do not have a human being in the middle of our defense mm-hmm. that can turn a game. You're saying Van Der Esch is not the guy? I, no, I'm saying down linemen. Okay, got you. Got I, you. Don't, I just talked to Ren about TCU. Okay. And Ren, you know, Ren, we have a guy that works as a TCU guy, guy and a guy, Tom, TCU mm-hmm. guys. And when I looked at the game, I saw one thing. I saw one thing that made me know why TCU, yeah. when the storm started, why it couldn't be stopped. Yeah. Look at the defensive line mm-hmm. of Georgia. Look at the offensive line a Georgia. Yeah, I'm a grown man. And I saw TCU had one or two guys, maybe was maybe was as tall as them, but girth yeah. and man. I'm a grown man, yeah. Yeah, I said to myself, yeah. wow. Yeah. And then they got a 30-year-old quarterback. <laughs> Georgia, excuse me, I mean 25-year-old quarterback. <laughs> hey, we're college going to turn back to college, man. <laughs> You run right with a man. You run right with a man, <laughs> right with a man 25 years old, playing against some babies. <laughs> He's too wrong, man. Nah, he he wrong, man. No. You wrong. I, Mahomes is 27. I know. <laughs> what is with us in both? And this dude run right here arrogant like, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm the, I'm, y'all go. No, you 25. You you put your your lime in the bed. Hey, baby, let's stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah there were 17-year-olds. Yeah. <laughs> but wrong. anyway, you're wrong. <laughs> All right. So, what? What? If you're Dan Quinn, because everybody's going to talk about when they talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, most people are going to speak about the about the offense, right? Tom yeah. Brady, and he has all his guys back. Yes, yes. All his weapons. Yes, okay? yes. Auden, tight end from UW right. is there. Fournette's in the backfield. Giovanni Bernard, the, the great running back from from Cincinnati, Pass catching. Ooh. He's the fourth running back on the depth chart. But he can catch passes. Yeah, you dog already catch passes, okay? Speaking of catching passes, Leonard Fournette has 73 receptions this year. 
So people speak on their offense about their running game and their inability to run the ball, right. even though they ran for 130 plus against Dallas for the first week of the season. Right. Their running game is their screen game, which is right. why Fournette has 73 receptions. Right. Okay, so when you think about their offense, you know, how prolific their their quarterback is, the caliber of running backs that they have, the whole stable of running backs right. they have, and then all the receivers they have. Right? They got they got freaking they got Mike Evans, they got uh, Gage, they have. Godwin, they have Julio Jones. Julio Jones. So that's their four-headed monster right there. Right. Okay. And it's Devin Top- Tompkins you yeah, talking about? Yeah, I like that cat. That's the underrated cat. Y'all heard right. it here first. Number 83, the Tompkins. That's, yeah. This dude is a complete problem. They just activated him on practice squad. You're not going to see big stats on him. That's why we don't pay attention to the stats. Right. But how he is utilized will hurt Dallas. And Dallas is definitely going to keep an eye on, on, on him for sure. But if you're Dan Quinn... What are you telling your guys this week? Because this is more of a battle. From my perspective, this is Dan Quinn versus Tom Brady. Yes. And you ready? I'm listening. Please don't disregard this like we have done the last 10 years. Plus. Plus. It's going to come down to the middle of your defense once again. Mm. Tom Brady hates pressure up the middle. So if we can't get any pressure up the middle, Mm. it will not matter. Trust me. That is in the run game and that is in the pass game. Because our big... If I'm coach, I'm like, y'all, we're going to have to stop the run. I know Tom Brady, you don't want him throwing 60 times, but you can't have it both ways. You can't let him run the ball and throw the ball. So I'm going to stop the run the best I can to make Tom throw it, but I'm going to have pressure. My pressure, my blitzes, are my surprise blitzes, if you can get, they coming from up the middle. They cannot come from the outside. You ain't going to get there, and you're not going to affect Tom. Okay, so let me yes. let me come back to that with Byron mm-hmm. Leftwich, is office right. coordinator for Tampa Bay Buccaneers. His game plan, along with Tom Brady, is get the ball out quick. Yeah. They are the best team yes, sir. at getting the ball out quick, right. quickly. They're going to give up 2.9% of their passes for the whole year have come in, in sacks. Right. So, in addition to that, right, how do you get home to somebody who doesn't hold the ball, and how do you get home to somebody that – up the middle, like you're saying, when they're going to stretch you so so far sideline to sideline. Like, how does Dan Quinn attack him? This is how you attack him. When they have all four of their receivers, Nate. Uh, okay. And we have... I, I know what you're digging at. Okay. I know what you what he's virtually... Let me tell you something. <laughs> what he's virtually saying, what he's really saying, not virtually. <laughs> what he's really saying is, there's no way you can attack him with those four good receivers. But I believe it is a way you can attack them. Okay. You put Nation right out there, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, in off coverage? No. You you come up. Oh, finally. You 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 gotta come up and, and put hands on guys. Thank you very much. You, you you gotta you gotta link your pass rush like it was the first seven games mm-hmm. of the year. You gotta link your pass rush up with your corners. Okay. They this is a game I believe you cannot be scared. A zone ain't going to beat Tom. Mm-mm. Now, this is what I think. Yeah. Now, I hope I'm wrong. A zone ain't going to beat Tom. I agree. You got to come up. But you got to redirect, and then you got to get on your horse. You know, if you, 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 know, you got to get on your horse. And whoever number 33 or 37 was last week, he oh, cannot mama. get on the field. <laughs> he cannot. <laughs> <laughs> This dude had a nine-yard cushion. They had to try it, Nate. He had this had dude had a nine-yard cushion. And still got gassed on. I know. I know. But <laughs> they signed Xavier Rose last week to the practice squad. Do you throw – Mullen was last week's experiment. You can't experiment this week. Xavier Rose is a Pro Bowl corner. So is Tyron Smith. But we guess what? Char- the great Char Barkley said – there's, there's two things you ain't ever going to win at. That's them females and father time. I guarantee <laughs> you can't beat father time and you cannot beat them females. Okay. So, Rose, 
Why is he on our team he just got this released. late in the season? He just got released from the practice squad from the Jets, I believe. From the practice squad from the Jets. And I know the Jets got a defense. But why was he not playing? Maybe Sauce Gardner? I don't know. Well, that's one guy. It's, th- it's five got, other guys. I got no answers for you. Nate. Okay, if he won better so than you're, you're, you're going to Mickey Spagnuolo on us right now? No, why is that, he out there? Yeah, why is, I mean, why is he free? You know, it's not to say he can't get it up for one game. No. He, it's not to say he can't be good in the red zone in a in closed area. Are, are you everything. willing? This is your DB situation right now. Nation Wright. Oh, sorry. Trayvon Diggs. That's one. Nation Wright. Yeah. Bland. De'Ron Bland. Yes. Those are your three starters right, right, right now. Right. Okay. Then you start. You have to start going to Kelvin Joseph. Israel McQuam move. They move him from safety to corner. Let me let me say this right here. Oh, you could, Mullen. Let me say this right or here. Or Rhodes. Let me say this right here. <laughs> you asked me a question about three minutes ago. <laughs> okay. If we have to commit our resources up front. We, st- we don't stand a chance. Mm-hmm. If we have to have the extra safety up on the line, we don't stand a chance. Okay. Our extra help has to come on the back end. Okay. So, Curse, and, Hooker, Wilson. Yeah. they These guys going to have to come up big, and more importantly, they can't miss any tackles. Thanks. So, uh, okay. All right. Put on, all right, so, flip, flip, flip sides. Okay. We're talking about the offense. Flip sides. <laughs> How do you attack this defense? What defense? <laughs> Tampa Bay. There's a dude who's been nursing a calf injury, Nate. Excuse me? <laughs> yeah, oh, it up. You're good. Allergies, uh, uh. Uh, He's been nursing a, a calf injury. He just happened to go to a great university, University of Washington, by the uh, matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, his name is Vita Vea. And they have a dude uh, that's going to be playing right next to Vita Vea because they play three down, yeah, three down yeah. front, okay? okay? So for those that don't understand, a 3-4 set – when you hear defensive end, it's really not a defensive end. A three, a, a three, four set. These guys are. It's a man over the center. Talk to him. It's a man over both tackles, head up, and a yard away. How big are the guys for Tampa? They're, uh, they're probably about, on average, about six three, about three twenty at the at the least. Mm-hmm. At the least, it's late in the season, so let's say three thirty at okay. the least. So Vita Vea, you have how much? two linebackers over the guards, uh-huh. about seven yards off the ball. Okay. You have two outside linebackers that can't be anywhere from three yards to maybe four or five yards, depending on what the strength yeah. is. Okay. Okay, so we're talking about Vita Vea. We're talking about Akeem Hicks. Yeah. On the defensive line. Akeem Hicks is 340. Right, Vita Vea right. is 350. Yeah. Vita okay. Vea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No yeah. sack. Yeah. Defensive end, Goldston. Goldston's on the other yeah. end. Yeah. Then you got yeah. Joe Tryon on the, on the outside. Yeah. Okay, you got Winfield Jr. out there safety yeah. position. Okay, you got some, you got some dudes. Levante David is he still? Oh healthy? yeah, David and White, them boys can run. Yeah. The boys can run at the second level. White. They got forty four sacks, but you know what's so sad? Your boy done missed a couple of games, and he still got six point five sacks. Who did avail? Yeah, you. Let me ask you this question: Can you hunker down and stop him from bull rushing you? I could. I know you could. You, you, you Nate the Great. I know you could. i sit out with him. I'll be yeah, fat yeah. on fat. <laughs> but does the Dallas Cowboys, with, with Connor McGovern at center, your boy? I thought Funniac was going to be at center. Ooh. They say Funniac or... Uh, Farniak or, um, or McGovern. Either yeah. one of them, they're going to be at center. Okay? You got Jason Peters, who's beginning Tostito. He's at left tackle. And then you got the young bull, young 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 Smith at yeah. left guard. The left side looks frail. What's your game plan for that, Nate? Run on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell y'all. Where, something, where does where does Dallas have the advantage in this game? Let's let's get straight nah, to the nitty gritty. I, I think they still I still think they had advantage. Uh, what they have to do is, I've seen coaches say, you know what, uh, it's going to be tough sledding. Mm. And regardless of what happens, you still have to run the ball. What our coach, what I played, what our coach would say, Tony Wise, uh, either the great Hudson Hawk, they would say, what we are asking from you as offensive line is no negative yardage. 
They say zero gain will not bother us, mm -hmm. but a one yard loss will cripple us. Mm -hmm. Because that 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 you know that turns into second and ten. Mm -hmm. So a second and eleven. Yeah. And it's something about defensive coordinators, it just sets them off in defense alignment. So oh, what we trying to do, the worst we want to be is maybe third and eight. Yeah. You know, and we may get on, we may get it. I'm talking about our offense back in mm -hmm. the day. We may get it and we may not. Gotcha. But this offense won't get it. Okay. This offense is not, you know, they, they keep talking about uh, we 53%. This. No, you're not that against the better teams, yeah. the better defensive linemen. You're not that. So you have to stay even with the chains. You have to always be no worse than third and five. Mm -hmm. Every down, it can't be work. It can't be third and yeah. six. Third, yeah. it's got to be third and five. You got to give yourself a chance. So, do you need more first downs than you had against Washington? You had ten against Washington. Let's say you need twenty-five or thirty. So, again, tri so again. triple the production. Yes, you need twenty-five or thirty. Okay. First right. downs, you, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to limit Tom Brady's uh, chances on the other side. If you can hold this down to five, maybe six uh, possessions a game, don't get Tom seven and eight. Especially don't get Tom seven and eight in the, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. You know, you, you, what you do in that first half is going to set you up for the second half. But what you can't do, because normally when you get Tom Brady, that seventh or that eighth yeah, uh, possession – those are money drives yeah. for him. Yeah, don't give him the extras. Yeah. yeah so, you extras. know, if you can keep him to six per, per half, yeah. that you means know, you like, got to have some six that's minutes. Like, that's like drive. being at a restaurant. So they bring you a plate. Right. He said, it's not what I ordered. Well, they can't take it back. Right. They're just going to leave it out there. Right. right. You, just, you just got an extra meal. That's, that's right. What, that's what it is with Tom Brady. <laughs> he, <laughs> didn't, he didn't order the extra. He didn't order yeah. the turnover, but he'll take it. Yeah. He'll take it. He definitely going to consume it. So, yeah. mindset. Okay, as, as we start winding down this thing, what's the difference in playoff and regular season mindset and playoff mindset, Nate? People, I mean, you got you got you got multiple rings, okay? And you you've been down the road, you've had good playoff runs, you have bad playoff runs. What's the difference between the regular season? What switch comes on between the regular season and playoffs? For 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 as me, uh, and I'm being honest. Yeah, now. I'm being honest as I can. Yeah, uh, for as me, I was a part of you. Mm -hmm. That went down to almost nothing. Okay. You just locked in. Yeah, that went down to almost nothing. Uh, my study went up. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I had to be accountable, and I'm not. And, and I'm gonna tell you the truth. I had Troy, Mike, Emmett. These guys looked at you, mm -hmm. and I had to be accountable to these guys, especially my offensive line. Because I'm telling you, I was that guy that, every, hey, man, come on, yeah, let's yeah, study some yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Nate, what you doing, man? Yeah. So I had to be accountable. Yeah. So if we got to the playoffs, everything, you know, I had to put it on hold for two or three weeks, mm -hmm. you know. And so uh, your, your preparation mentally is so key. Mm -hmm. You know, now – you have no opportunities. Like, if you have two turnovers against the wrong team, mm -hmm. in which all playoff teams are the wrong team to have turnovers against, yeah, that they're going to capitalize. Yeah. They, they, it, 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 it's a, you have to say it's an automatic three, yeah. and they're going for six. Mm -hmm. So you can't have the turnovers or the stupid penalties. Yeah. If you hit for a 70-yard bomb, that can't be coming back. Yeah. Because teams are not going to give you those back-to-back -back bad plays. Facts. A back-to-back -back bad or oh, bad coverage. Oh, boom. Yeah, they, they ain't finna do that again. Yeah, don't, don't get a holding call. Yeah. Don't get a hands to the face. Yes. Don't get any of them silly penalties yeah. that you can control that negate big plays. Because you're going to have four, four plays offensively and defensively that's going to set you up to turn the game around. Facts. And that's how I looked at it. That's what Coach Johnson taught. You know, he like, okay – we're going to play, and this this is how the – like Michael Jordan. Do you think Michael Jordan got the ball with a minute left mm -hmm. in the game, or 35, 24 seconds left in the game, saying, I'm going to throw it between my legs twice, I'm going to go around this dude, mm -hmm. then I'm going to slam it backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you've seen him do that to win games, but that was all natural. Yep. 
Purpose. That was all naturally. He went out. How what was the best way to get these two points? Yeah. If I see an open guy, I'm going to throw it to him. Yep. He thinking like that. Who is my open guys? Right. He thinking like that. But when he make that super great play, he ain't playing that. Mm-hmm. So when Coach John used to tell us, don't plan great plays. Plan the simple plays. Execute them and let your talent be great. Like and that's how you get great plays. Like it. Yeah, yeah man. <clears throat> If y'all don't know out there, playoff football, it's not normal football. That's right. It's, <laughs> then you guys just heard Nate talk about it. Okay, I think I went out of my six years in the league, I think I was there five. Yeah. Uh, five playoff runs. Right, right. One Super Bowl run. And the intensity in everything that you do, the focus and everything. I mean, your your meals are intentional. Yes. Right? Yes. Your meals are intentional. Your, your weight room sessions are intentional. Okay, you're – your walkthroughs are, are are freaking dialed in now. Yes. Right? You're looking for your film study, your all your preparation, everything is so finite. You know, it's just, I mean, you're you're looking for any little edge. Any edge. I know for you guys, you guys are looking for <clears throat> alignment. Right. You know what I'm saying? Any kind of indicators that might give you alert of a stud right. or something like right. that. Like you're looking for anything. And I've been in the I've been in the the huddle. I've been in the the, the film room with T B twelve. And I know how much film that dude watches. If there's anything, any indicator that you have, any kind of key, any kind of hint, any kind of anything that you naturally do, get rid of it this week. Get rid of it this week because they he will find it. The thing that the thing that's going, the thing that sets you apart is I'll use TCU and, and because I respect what they coach did this year. He was asked several times after they got like six wins. They was asked several times, eight wins, and they started getting up five, mm-hmm. seven. He was asked multiple times, are you talking to your kids about the playoffs? He's like, nah. He said, are you talking to your kids about y'all could be number one? He said, no. He said, we're preparing and we're focused mm-hmm. on what our next opponent is and what we have to do. I think once they became in the playoffs, then it, you can't ignore it. Yeah. You know, now maybe it's some like, players it's like, it's like water. It, it's like yeah. water. Water, some water yeah. gonna get through. Yeah. So maybe some players was doing it when they got that ninth and tenth win. Mm-hmm. But for the whole part, you you know, we didn't talk Super Bowl for us with Jimmy until we won the Super Bowl. Mm. Then next year we started over. And then later on in the year, when he saw it could happen again, he started talking, if you want to win this second Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So when I hear people holler Super Bowl, (laughs) I'm like, you're a long ways away. I'm like, son, you, how old are you? I'm 30. Well, son, it was, you were five years old. What are Mm -hmm. you talking about? Can we get in the playoffs and win the game before us? Yep. And, 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 uh, and that's what I like about, and I'm hoping coach with TCU doing the same thing. Don't don't basically start where you started last year. You can be a little bit ahead, you know, depending on your core team. Mm-hmm. But if if some way somehow you can just continue to build on that, you know, by being a better team, by getting better players, mm-hmm. especially the offensive, defense, alignment. And that's where we haven't, as a Cowboys, we haven't got per se. Uh, we had a shot at Vita. Yeah. You know, we had a shot several years ago at Fletcher Cox. We didn't take him. Yeah. Fletcher Cox has won a Super Bowl, and right to this day, Fletcher Cox can still command respect. We, and, and I'm not, Gallimore is Gallimore. He's yep. just a guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Osa. Uh, Osa, uh, no, Osa is a little bit better than a guy. Hmm. If Osa had better guys With around him, him yeah. he, he, he would shine a little bit more. Okay. But now you just, you know, you just caught up in the mix. Yeah. See, I was a part of that. I was a better offensive lineman than a lot of guys I played with early in my career. Then when I got Big E, Larry, I became a, ooh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Iron sharpens iron, Absolutely. bro. Absolutely. Uh, I look at Big Ridgeway. Big Ridgeway went to Washington. Start playing. They played with, you know, we didn't see nothing in training camp. Nothing. He start, and all of a he, sudden. He's starting with that line. He come up in there. One of the big Jonathan Allen get hurt. And he's throwing high guys. I'm like, hold on. Don't you know that's Zach Martin you throwing around? All right. So, 
Big Ridgeway out of that SEC, dog. <laughs> Lock and saw. Absolutely. Man, I, this dude couldn't. This dude couldn't even snap. He couldn't even take going to the restroom and get some Charmin and, <laughs> and, t- and tear it off the deal. He was so soft. Couldn't even tear it off the. Off and the now spoon. he played with, with the best defensive line in football. Yeah. I mean he. I mean, I saw him one time just take one of our guys and just Chuck him. throw him to the. I was like, hold That's on, the this same dude, dude we cut. But this dude couldn't move for us. We cut him early. Yeah. All right, man. Hey, playoff football is here. I know we're talking about Dallas. There's a whole lot of other teams out there that are solid dog on football teams. And I think, honestly, I think Dallas got the short end in the stick in terms of what what bracket they got put into. Now, Either they way, ain't get the short end in the you stick. You don't think so? They earned it right where they belong. Yeah, you facts. You're right about they that. They earned it right because. Either way, you got to get to. <laughs> Philly's waiting on you. Yeah. Yeah, you don't think they are? Yeah, Philly waiting. A week off. This is the team <laughs> I want to see. I want to see the Cowboys play. Okay. But, man, I want to see what them 49ers going to mm, do. I don't, you don't want to see them boys. I, I want to see what they going to do. Mm, they got to get past Seattle first. Uh, <laughs> Why are y'all? <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, that, I, I, that, you didn't say that, that with no enthusiasm. <laughs> Yeah. They Y'all need Vita Vance. That's right. They got to get past <laughs> doggone them Seattle Seahawks first. You feel yeah. me? How and they, then, and then uh-huh. talking, that's what they're going to be doing after the game. Uh-huh. <laughs> they're going to be trying to fly away <laughs> from, them, hey, from hey, them 49. Hey, let me tell you something. We'll see y'all next time. We'll let y'all know whether or not these boys made it past uh-huh. the first round. We'll see y'all. <laughs>